So today we're going to be looking at verifying trig identities. Uh, this looks like an equation, and it, I mean it is. But unlike before in algebra and even pre-calculus, where we solve an equation by manipulating both sides, when we verify trig identity, we leave one side of the equation alone. We're not going to touch it. So we just want to change one side so that it looks like the other side. Uh, and so here what we have um, is we can make either side look like the other. For us, it's probably going to be easier to change this left side. And uh, there are a couple things and, about this, and I want you to know that you can solve any way you want. Um, there's not one particular way to solve. For example, if you look here in this denominator, that's sine of x and cosecant of x. Those are reciprocals. When you multiply reciprocals together, you get 1. So in this denominator, you have 1. In the numerator, we have cosecant of x minus sine of x. So really, your next step could just be cosecant of x minus sine of x equals cosecant of x sine of x. Um, but let's say we can't see that. We can focus that this is one term in the denominator. Remember, a term is something that you separate it by a plus sign or a minus sign. So here, in the numerator, there are two terms because there are these two things separated by one minus sign. So because this is one term in the denominator, I can break apart this fraction into smaller fractions based off of what the numerator is. So we're going to have cosecant of x over the denominator minus sine of x over the denominator. And of course, this should equal cosecant of x minus sine of x. Here, cosecant and cosecant cancel. Sine and sine cancel. So I'm left with 1 over sine of x minus 1 over cosecant of x equals cosecant of x minus sine of x. In, or sorry, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So this is cosecant of x minus 1 over the cosecant, which is sine. And so this equals cosecant of x minus sine of x. So there we go. I have the two sides equal to each other. So I'm done. This is just a matter of substitution. And verifying trig identities is nice because it actually tells us what we should get as a final answer. Here, this looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. Um, a couple people asked about this. This is just the Greek letter beta. It's just a variable. If that scares you, you can change it, make it an x, make it a theta, whatever you want. But um, I'm going to keep working with the beta despite my <laughs> handwriting not being the best. Uh, all right, so if I look at this, I see that I am adding these two. One of these is a fraction. When you add a fraction, you need a common denominator. This denominator here is really 1, so the common denominator is going to be tangent of beta. We can even use the answer over here to sort of guide us. I mean, we see that here we have a fraction with tangent of beta in the denominator. So on the right-hand side, I mean, that's what we get. So we should probably manipulate this left-hand side so that it has a tangent of beta in the denominator. To do that with this fraction, I multiply the denominator by tangent of beta. In the numerator, I have to multiply as well. So tangent times tangent is tangent squared of beta. And here, because the common denominator, now I have a common denominator, I can actually combine them into one fraction, which is the whole point of finding a common denominator. Here, 1 plus tangent squared of beta, that is one of our trig identities. It's a Pythagorean identity that says that secant squared of theta equals 1 plus tangent squared of theta. Oops. I'm writing and talking at the same time, which is a dangerous mix. 
Uh, so here, I can just replace that. And the beautiful thing is about this, I mean, even if, okay, we get to a quiz, we get to a test, I don't really quite remember exactly what that Pythagorean identity is. Here, you can see the denominators are the same. So pretty much we can just make that jump to say, well, these numerators are the same. So 1 plus tangent squared of beta, that's got to equal secant squared of beta. And I'm done. So verifying trig identities, it takes a process, it takes a lot of logical thinking, um, but patience is a key. So make sure you take your time and let me know if you have any questions.